Good morning, welcome back to another video, and today we are going to be talking about what happened in the Void Century. Yes, I know, a Void Century video, let's go. Okay, so I wanted to talk about the Void Century because there's like so much crap about the Void Century. Even though it's a Void Century where not a lot actually is known about it, we actually know a decent amount about it. Or a decent enough amount to actually in order to speculate on. So, let's start off with, I have made a list of stuff because I cannot remember all of this crap <laughs> off the top of my head. So, the first thing that I wanted to cover is how long ago was the Void Century? And that was around about 800 to 900 years ago. It's basically a Void Century, so all the history is lost or is forbidden to study by the world government, there is something to do with the world government in the Void Century. There is ties to the Ancient Kingdom within the actual Void Century, so that's pretty cool, I guess. And the Poneglyphs are the only remnants that we know of as of yet about the Void Century. Now, obviously, you can somewhat say, oh yeah, the, the Straw Hat, that, that could represent something in the Void Century. Yeah, that hasn't been fully confirmed, but it's quite cool to theorise on. But we know that the Poneglyphs are, so we're going to focus on those. Okay, so what do we know about the Poneglyphs? Now, the Poneglyphs are these massive cuboid structures that have just been crafted out of, like, this indestructible material, which is actually found on Wano. Now, this was actually crafted or like chiseled, like so, like a stonemason, by the Kozuki clan. And the Kozuki clan pretty much crafted and made these Poneglyphs. Now, we don't, as of know yet, if they know how to read the Poneglyphs. Um, I doubt that they very do, uh, after this many years as well. But there is something along the lines of they actually crafted these. So, the, somehow they are affiliated um, with the ancient kingdom it from the void century so that's pretty cool to understand like like it's something that you can get a bit hyped about now the next thing that i wanted to cover or on the poneglyphs is joy boy's apology now you got things like joy boy's apology when it comes to his apology to poseidon or the poseidon before Shirahoshi, or has there been many Poseidons? But we'll get on to that part when we go to the ancient weapons and all that jazz. But Joy Boy writes an apology towards the Poseidon at that present time during the Void Century, and he apologizes that he cannot make keep the promise that he made to her. And he basically carves it into an indestructible stone. So this gives you kind of an idea on this is kind of heavy because if you're going to write an apology to someone, wouldn't you just use a piece of paper and just and a pen? So if it's an apology towards someone and you've made it an indestructible apology, that means, kind of gives me the idea that he's somewhat keeping the promise to Poseidon, but he's passing it on. He's passing the promise on, but he's apologising because he couldn't necessarily do it. And this brings up loads of different theories about Joy Boy. That was my shoulder clicking right there. That was bad. But <laughs> it's one of those ones where I, 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 love, I love the idea of Joy Boy. Like, it's so cool. Like, you can theorise on that for like days and it's just ridiculous. So I wanted to just play around with that and see how that went. Now, obviously with, the po obviously, with the Poneglyphs, you have these four Poneglyphs, which are called the Road Poneglyphs, and they will all tell you, once you have gathered them all, where the location of Raftal is in the One Piece universe. Now, I have my own little theory on that. I personally think it's somewhere in the East Blue, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, and to be honest, Raftal, I don't know. Like... The road poneglyphs are meant to tell you exactly where Rafter is, and yeah, it's it's one of those things. So it's either the One Piece 
is related to the void century or Wrathful Wizard affiliated by the for by the void century. Um, more like that the actual island of Wrathful is the remnants of the of the ancient kingdom from the void century that got wiped out by the world government. So it's more like that. And the one piece is just hidden in there is the most likely option. But some some people have come on to say that the One Piece is the uh, the Ancient Kingdom. Um, I don't really subscribe to that because, you know, it would seem like a pretty bad payoff if you ask me. And, ee, no. Um, no, <laughs> it's not one of those ones that I would actually go on to go about. But really, the actual Poneglyphs talk about the three ancient weapons but we'll get onto that in a later bit in the video because I have a section for the ancient weapons and all that jazz. But let's talk about the ancient kingdom now and the all we really know about the ancient kingdom is they're from the void century and they got destroyed by the 20 kings that created the world government. They all allied together, destroyed the ancient kingdom. I'm guessing I'm going to take a shot in the dark that they did not, their ideals did not align with each other's and that is why they clashed and they all joined forces to, boom, destroy the Ancient Kingdom. Now you never know, some some people from the Ancient Kingdom could still be, very well be alive. You never know, like Eam Summer, uh, everyone's going on and talking about how he could be immortal. Um, I don't know, I really don't know at this point. Um, it would be cool, nonetheless, like, Eam Summer, immortal god of the of the t 20 kings. And it's just like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of those ones where it's nice to think about, but I would like to see some evidence about it, if you know what I'm saying. Because, at the end of the day, it's just a hooded guy at this moment in time that just sat on top of the throne and the Gora Sages bowed to him. So... Hopefully we get some more exposition in the later bits in Ra uh, in the Reverie arc that is starting again. So happy for it, so I would like to actually carry on with that. Okay, so I wanted to talk about Joy Boy a little bit more. He actually was the one who actually built the Noah, uh, so to speak. And some people have gone on to say that it's one of the ancient weapons, all that jazz. It's so cool. Um, but Joy Boy... Obviously, I love Joy Boy. He's the one that wrote the the Poneglyph that we covered earlier, and he built the Noah for the fishmen of the Fishman Island to actually take them up to the surface, like the entire residents of Fishman Island in that one boat to go up to the surface. Do you, do you understand how, how absolutely insane that is? That's like taking an entire country and shoving it on a boat and then... Yeah, that's just insane, like, that's insane to think about, that's like a shitload of aircraft carriers for like an entire country, like, that's ridiculous amounts. I I, I couldn't do much about that, but but um, I just wanted to cover it right there before we move on to the actual world government, so to speak. The world government was formed 800 years ago, and it was, yeah... Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the world government now. Um, in the Void Century, we know of that the world government was actually formed by the 20 kings around about 800 years ago. And and all the 20 kings basically uh, basically stabbed their swords into, in front of that throne, formed the world government, bada bing, bada boom. And that made the world government. Okay, so, <laughs> um, and the 20 King's descendants are now the Celestial Dragons, and they're just basically pompous arseholes who have, like, little bubbles on their head because they don't want to breathe the air of the common folk, even though it's probably just a hole through, through, through the actual thing. So, it's a bit special, to say the least. They don't seem to be all that bright besides the Gorosei, and... Um, the Gorosei, I, I, I believe they are Celestial Dragons, I believe. It says it on the actual fan wiki when I was double checking this, but apparently they are Celestial Dragons. So, I'm guessing there's a hierarchy going on there. 
but uh, maybe they're the smartest of the world government, well, of the celestial dragons, and they're like, right, we're the bosses. Yeah, that's cool. They're not the pompous assholes like Charlos. Charlos is always the punching bag for everything because he literally is a punching bag. Like, like Luffy beat the crap out of him. Zoro nearly beheaded the the, the dude. And um, what's his name? Don Quixote Maru. Ah, oh, man, I've gone blank. The other celestial dragon just whacked him with a club in the last bit of uh, reverie. Well, it's actually quite a while back, but that's not the point. Now, the celestial dragons basically don't have to abide by any of the laws of the world government. They can do what the hell they like. They can kill people. <clears throat> and I find it quite funny, really, because if they don't have to adhere to the laws, they can just cap anyone and they, and they can just walk around and just be dicks. So obviously slavery is allowed for them. So they have loads of slaves and are absolute pompous assholes when it comes to that type of crap that we've seen. They even used Kuma. Like I think Roswell was riding Kuma. And I'm just like, Kuma's one of my favourite characters. You dare sit on him and make him your slave. I will kick your ass. I will come into the manga world and beat the crap out of you with that. With your own bloody head. I don't know how I'd do that, just rip it off and start beating his bed body up. I don't know. I <laughs> oh man, I'm just losing the plot right now. <laughs> I've had way too much sugar already today. But um, the world government, when it comes to the Poneglyphs, it is forbidden. You are not allowed to study. You're not even allowed to research. Like, you're not allowed to do, know anything about, like, the Poneglyphs or the Void Century. You're not allowed to talk about it. You're not allowed to do anything about it. Otherwise, you will be capped like Professor Clover in Ohara. Now, Ohara, Ohara were a load of scholars, and they were researching the Poneglyphs because they're scholars. Makes sense. And for you that don't know what a scholar is, they basically just like archaeologists and very very smart people so they're just all researching it because they want to know what the history is of the world so they're trying to work out the void century and they're on the phone to well professor clover is on the phone to the gorose and he was talking about how he knows about the void century blah 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 and he seems rather happy when it comes to it and he's about to say the name, and one of them says, kill him, and poof, Clover gets capped, and the entire island of Ohara basically gets Buster called to hell. And that is why Nika Robin is the only survivor, because she just managed to escape just by the uh, giant soul. So... Yeah! <laughs> Nika Robin is the only resident of Ohara that actually survived. Um, f funny little side note, Aku Inu was there and he basically destroyed a load of like random just civilians of Ohara in a ship because he's like, no, there can't be any survivors. Like, I'm meaning, this guy's a dick. Like, I don't like Aku Inu just because he's just a dick. He's just absolutely dick. Why would you just kill civilians? And he does explain why he does it. He, well, he tells explains why he said to do it and that was because even one scholar escaping on that boat knowing the truth we can't have that happen so we're gonna have to cap him all so it's like a massive purge basically a buster call so Negro robin at this time is the only one that can read the poneglyphs aside from pudding with her third eye thing but we don't know as of yet if she can actually read them because it's only that we've only heard that somewhat in whispers, so to speak. We've never actually seen her read it with her third eye because otherwise, well, Big Mum would be able to actually find Raft or so somewhat. I'm pretty certain if she's able to just go all the way over to Kaido's Island, like at this moment she's on her way to Wano. So that's pretty insane. Like she would be, she would have already been able to find out where Raft is. Now, last and finally, let's talk about the ancient weapons for a second. Now, the ancient weapons that are depicted by, well, depicted by the Poneglyphs and talked about by Nico Robin is, you've got Pluton, which is known as a battleship that 
can basically level an island. It's one battleship that can basically do a buster call in one shot. That's terrifying. Absolutely freaking terrifying. Imagine, imagine if you're Cobra and someone comes up to you with Pluton. I'm capped, mate. Um, you're dead. You, you, <laughs> your entire kingdom. You've spent your entire life building your kingdom. It's gone. <laughs> that's just that's just ridiculous power. We have another one which is Shirahoshi, and she is known as Poseidon, and she can speak to the Sea Kings, which are ginormous, massive fish monsters, so to speak, that live primarily in the Calm Belt, but. They are everywhere else in the in the One Piece world. They just m are primarily in the Calm Belt because it's their nesting grounds for birthing more Sea Kings. I'm guessing to like the currents don't obviously move the eggs and all that shit. So yeah, but we have the last one and we don't know about it, and that is Uranus. Now Uranus is a weird one because we don't actually know much about Uranus and yes, we don't know much about your anus, yes, <laughs> okay, um, obviously I don't because I don't know you like face to face, but, um, but Uranus all jokes aside, Uranus is, but all jokes aside, Uranus is one of the ancient weapons and judging by what actually is going on we can see that Pluton is somewhat on the actual sea and Poseidon is in the sea and yeah it's going to be something to do with the sea. Uranus is definitely going to be something to do with the sea. Maybe it could possibly be something to do with the sky but I'm more borderlining it with Uranus is somewhat, and this is my own little theory, maybe Uranus isn't one of, like, isn't one thing as an ancient weapon. Maybe Uranus is the devil fruit. Have you not, like, thought of that? Like, <laughs> because they are incredibly powerful things. Imagine if you had an entire army, <coughs> Kaido. Um, you got a very strong force there that can basically level most things. Imagine if you had an entire platoon of low gear users. Every person on your crew had every single low gear in existence. You'd be able to level anyone with it. Even if someone came at you with armor hacky, you'd still be able to level the crap out of them because they could not stop everything coming at them. Fire, ice, lightning, blah, 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 blah. The list goes on. It's just one of those things, but Uranus, as we know, we don't know much about it. Uh, some people have speculated that Momonosuke is Uranus because he was able to speak to Zunisha. I think that's a completely different topic, so altogether, um, him being able to hear Zunisha and speak to her and command her, I think that is something to do with the Kozuki clan in general, but when it comes to Uranus as an ancient weapon, that's a no-go. I think Uranus is going to be something, but I don't think it's Mamanosuke. I'm more borderlining that it is like a god, like it's it's something to do with like it's going to be something to do with the with the ocean, and or it could very well just be the devil fruits or the tree of the devil fruit, where all the devil fruits are very first birthed. Maybe we'll find that on Elbath. That's a nice little theory, actually. I'll get back to you on that one. But that's pretty much all I know on the Void Century. Please tell me what I have actually missed or I could redo, um, because then we could do a proper updated version of the Ancient Kingdom. And I would very much like to do these longer videos even more. And that is why I have cut down from doing daily. And we're going to focus on some longer content, because I like just rambling my ass off. And I want to talk about loads of cool stuff. So that being the case, I shall see you in the next video. As and when. Bye-bye.